What up, knuckleheads? Welcome to the first annual Beefy Boys Best of Extravaganza. I'm Joe, and I'm joined here by Christian. Hello. Vito. What up? And Colin, our special guest. Hello. This episode, we're going to be discussing our favorite games, music, TV, sports moments if we want, movies of the last year. Where do you guys want to start? With a burp. With a burpity burp, huh? Um, you know what? Let's go ahead and uh, let's jump right into music. All right. Let's go ahead and do some music. So, Joe, we're talking about 2018, right? Yeah. You know, I get that, but there's one album that I have to put in there because I didn't find out about it until... I, or, I mean, it wasn't really released until, like, December of 2017, Ah. So it wasn't there for that awards Forget show. Get that awards push, yeah. Yes. <laughs> it's got the awards push. It's going to be uh, kicking off with, oh man, one of my favorite albums of the year by far is uh, Midlands on the Rocks. So it's their country group from, uh, I mean, they're from Texas, obviously. And they're not from Midland, but they're from Texas. And they put out an album... That was so incredibly good that I have listened to it probably about, eh, from from start to finish, about maybe 12, 15 times. Wow. Oh, yeah. Easy. Just straight through? Oh, straight through. Damn. From start to finish. I mean, when I work out, when I drive, when I do that. So can you work out the country? What's that? <laughs> so what? How does that work? With twang. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that worked out to just about with, with like anything. Oh, okay. If it's any music, I mean, I was fucking yeah. running the other day. You're like doing it in time to the music. <laughs> I mean, that's what I do with metal. No, I don't do it. I mean, metal can be on. You work out. <laughs> but so I was running the other day, and fucking uh, Andre Bocelli's Ave Maria came on. <laughs> running, and I I don't have the time to to reach into my pocket and change it just because I'm focusing on not collapsing due to my side ache. But you gotta get one of those like armbands and you just boop. Yeah, I should. Or one of those Apple watches. Oh yeah. Oh, except I don't have an Apple product. Google no, Watch. Neither then. do I. <laughs> <laughs> My company pioneered the process that engraves those. By the way. Ooh. Fucking sick. You should <laughs> take, do a quick shout out to your company. Yeah, hit us up, man. Hit us up. <laughs> what's the, what's your company called? Uh, we're well, Electro Scientific Industries. Generic that, tech name. Uh, yeah, right. Dot com. It's, well, we're, we're old. That probably sounded really super cool in 1940 when we came out. I mean, it still does. Yeah, sure. to be to be sure. <laughs> that sounds lame. How many vowels does, is it missing? All its vowels, or does it have the vowels? It has vowels. And it's so not it hip. Be a modern <laughs> tech company. Yeah, but we're Portland's <laughs> oldest tech company. Oh, yeah. So and then to get yeah to ju- I mean to just get me out of the way first, you know, because I've talked about these albums so many times. I am telling our listeners to fucking listen to these albums. I don't know if they're doing it or not, because I haven't gotten any feedback on it. But <clears throat> Cody Jinx Lifers. Shots fired. <laughs> <laughs> Cody Jinx Lifers and Coulter Wall's Planes to See Planesmen. Um, or, Definitely sorry, called out that Coulter Wall uh, album a half dozen times. I think that's I think that's actually the name of a song on the album. I think I fucked up on the album name. But it's uh I think it's I uh, somewhere around there. It's it's one of those country names or songs of the pioneers or something like that anyway it's a fucking terrific album it's a it's a perfect album folks cody jinx's album is a perfect album i already talked about this on episode one i'm not gonna stick around and be here too long on this uh 2018 music list just because i got mine out of the way first so uh, how about we go to our our special guest how about you you know colin how about you tell us about your uh before you tell us about your you know one of your one of your all-time favorites of all time, or what you would consider a perfect album. How about you give us your 2018s, like, your music of 2018. What's the best, like, album or, or song or whatever of 2018? Okay, well, so if we're limiting ourselves to stuff that only came out in 2018, probably uh, Super Organism by Super Organism. They're, like, stoner, indie. I've been really enjoying them, and I've been listening to an ungodly amount of St. Vincent this year. I don't know. That's just been my jam when I'm on the bike, when I'm in the gym. Like, their sound is awesome. Right on. I like yeah. it. And, uh, Vito? 
Uh, well, uh, th- this here music oh, is... We just uh, got a list going. <laughs> I, I <laughs> see it coming. <laughs> I, I, I don't have a list. I have a band that I was introduced to, like, two weeks ago mm-hmm. or something, um, called Gershock, I think. Um, G-U-R-S-C-H-A-C-H. And on the album Dark Matter is, uh... The song Innocent Blood, which is really cool. It's a metal band. Um, I'd say they're probably closest to like thrash as far as genres go, subgenres. Um, and they're just like solid, like very, very new band. Um, like they sound like a new band. They don't sound super polished, but they also sound really good for being like a newish band. So yeah. It's right good. on. I like it. Oh, Wolf Parade. I almost left off Wolf Parade. I'm listening to a lot of them this year. Wolf Parade, why does that sound familiar to me and why can't I pinpoint it? Because they've been around since like a long time. Been around. What, uh, what genre? <laughs> it's indie. And they've been okay. around. <laughs> <laughs> it's been so, a while. I only have one. Are they the ones that did uh, that loud, that really loud song? It's like a, a woman, lot of their... you know, you woman. Oh, no, 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 no. That's no. Wolf Mother. That's Wolf Mother. <laughs> 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 that's yeah. I, even I know Wolf Mother. <laughs> yeah, that's no, 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 no. Okay, anyways, see, I only I'm, have. I'm on the wrong track. I only have one favorite album of the year. That would be Rise Against Ghost Note Symphonies Volume One. This is a collection of Rise Against songs from the past, redone with a full orchestral backing and completely acoustic. You so would. it takes all of their like classic hits and takes out all of the like post-hardcore guitar rest and replaces it with a full orchestra. And it totally changes the sound of some of them. I played it for the boys when they first came over. That is my song of the or album of the year. It's pretty cool. I mean, I like that unique idea of it, where it's like, yeah. it's uh, taking something, it's bringing in a new original idea to your original It's music. like MTV Unplugged back in the day. Yes, you know? like exactly. We talked and about you know, Nirvana Unplugged Nirvana doesn't Unplugged sound like a Nirvana is, at all, but, but sort it of like, does. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's essence deconstructed Nirvana. Mm-hmm. Yes. So I think I'll start with the movies. Well, hold on. We got to go into Colin's favorite album or perfect oh, yeah. album. We got to ask Colin. Never mind. We actually have two music questions. Oops. This is the first one. I'll surprise you with the second one afterward. But what's the perfect album or a perfect album according to you, Colin? Just one, not necessarily the best, but just the first one that kind of comes to mind as a best. So there was a, um, this this album was a little bit more of an anthology, but the reason I liked it is because it was totally imperfect. But so when I was a teenager, I, well, I still am a huge Tom Waits fan. And he put out a collection called Brawlers, Ballers, and Bastards, which was like 30 tracks that never made it to his albums. And they were totally unpolished and it was awesome. That's cool. I don't know. When nice. I was te- I, like I was raw, like all like B-sides? A raw, a raw tape. Right, exactly. Yeah. So it was basically, uh, cool. it was a collection of three discs of B-sides, and I got it from the Seattle Public Library System when <laughs> I was 15 years old, and nice. I really enjoyed it. Did you nice. say this was uh, Tom Waits? Tom Waits. Oh, Tom, yeah. Yeah. Tom Waits. All right, our second music question for you, Colin, and you can answer this real fast. What are your thoughts on late 90s slash early 2000s new metal powerhouse Limp Biscuit? <laughs> I actually don't enjoy oh, Limp Bizkit. Come on! That's <laughs> bullshit. You know, I enjoyed Corn more. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah I me too. My Chemical Romance more. Yeah, I did me not too. Like not Limp. new metal. Look, the new metal era was terrific. I'm really all right, not but that into Limp Bizkit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm with Vito. It just it, think, it wasn't my jam, man. Dude, I think you guys are missing out on the on the happiness of new metal. Because Limp Biscuit, I liked Corn. I liked Corn. Corn is like the Corn epitome is so of, good. Yeah, Slipknot's new metal too. I was big. On is Slipknot. it? Okay. Yeah. I feel like yeah. they're more like they're a little yeah. they're they're a little heavier they're than like a little heavier, heavier. but they still got the record. They're more new. They're less they of the rap got. rock and more of the new metal. But, but yeah. their first, yeah. I mean, their first like full on released album. It did have that kind of like. I push my fingers into my. Not that eyes. album. Not that album. <laughs> I mean, it was just the album that, that was had the like, iconic Slipknot album. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That was the album that made Slipknot who they are today. But I mean, I'm talking about the album that they came out. I was a hipster, that. so I listened to Mushroom Head at the time. You oh, were Mushroom Head. Oh yeah. <laughs> Mushroom Head. All right. Uh, they're like a. Yeah, they're like a. 
like they're a good. Kroger brand. They're like Kroger <laughs> like brand. Store brand. You know, fifteen-year-old me would love to tell you about how much Slipknot ripped off Mushroom Head back then. <laughs> <laughs> how they were the original. I gotta tell but this. Adult st- me will refrain. <laughs> so. <laughs> So Ara and I go to this trivia night all the time, and we brought Colin one time, and the music category happened to be 90s swing revival, and Colin got every single question correct in that category. <laughs> Just so because I know he who swept the it for nut us. Zippers are, and I listen to yeah. a lot of ska. Things. And you can separate oh, big bad oh, voodoo daddies from cherry popping daddies. Anyways, uh, <laughs> before we move into movies, there, Tim. Tim posted some of his favorites of the year as well. I haven't listened. I haven't even heard of any of these albums, but maybe you guys have. Uh, we have Arctic Monkeys, Tranquility Base yep. Hotel, and Casino Prod. Or you know that one? No. Yeah. Uh, yep. Good album. Okay. We have Protest the Hero, Kezi Alive, Tenth Anniversary. That one's a miss for me. Yeah, me too. Uh, yeah. Murder by Death, the other show. I love Murder by Death. Christian, you would it. actually like them a lot. So what they do is like. Western, like, con- uh, like a little bit country Western Americana. The guy sounds exactly like Johnny Cash with a little bit of punk rock sensibility, and they're awesome. Oh my! Am that I, that does know, sound pretty cool. That yeah, does yeah, sound yeah, fun. yeah. No, they're, they're, they're I'll definitely check it out. I mean, we have it on. the You Facebook gotta love. Mur- I, I love murder by. Day. And then we have a uh, Lord Huron Vide Noir. I'm seeing blank stares. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, he's got a, yeah. He's got a very like. Yeah, he's all over the place. Yeah, I wonder what my he's sister. He's got good taste. He likes Murder by Death. They're yeah. a great band. There you go. Seems to have a pretty diverse taste. It seems to be all over the place. Yeah. Because I, I mean, aren't aren't the uh, Arctic Monkeys kind of like a? They're indie. They're, they're like a, in, yeah, yeah, indie indie like punk. They're rock, like right? uh, alternative rock. It's yeah, more. Yeah, it's yeah, not. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's not like the like singer songwriter bullshit. Like, but it's also it's not. I mean, quite it's not as good either. as like. Butt rock, you Hard know to explain. Like, dun, dun, it's dun, like dun, in that dun, modest dun, mouse dun, category dun, dun, for me. Hey, yeah, you, yeah, know what, uh, yeah. you know what? Uh, you know what? You know what? Butt rock band I was listening to today on the way to play football. Puddle of mud. Oh God. Blurry baby. Two D's in puddle of mud. Oh, oh, P-O-D. Or, I guess four. P O D. Yeah, we mentioned them too. Rules. We are, we are yeah, the youth of a nation. Rules. You know what's kind of amazing? And Creed. A while ago, I would suggest highly to anybody just look Hero up the soundtrack to Queen of the Dams. Oh yeah! Oh, oh yeah! Oh, that yeah. album, that album, fucking. Rocks, Dear Lord! Dude. All right, you want to transition into best movies of the year? Before I, we go I just on that is a cultural. Zeitgeist. I think we need to talk. You mentioned but somebody rock mentioned ska tirade. Bands. I think we need to talk some ska. You want to talk about ska? I think we need to talk some Street ska. Light Manifesto. I was no. big into Real Big Fish for a it's while. Really good. Yeah, it, it, Street Light Manifesto is great. See, when it comes to ska bands, I have one question, and I asked you guys this when I first showed up. Uh. So the band, the band Cake, is that considered no. a ska band? No, 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 that's alternative. Absolutely. Fuck. I but they Cake is awesome, by the Cake way. Cake fucking rules. They are legit. They rule. I've been listening to them pretty heavy this week. They've I don't know. Been on my I, rotation. When I was a te- sixteen-year-old me, yeah, I love Cake. I, I liked Cake, but I also liked Leftover Crack. Is that a band? That's totally a band. <laughs> it is. It is a really. Vito just had like. He zeroed in and was like, Wait, "Yeah, what?" <laughs> <laughs> but no. So it, they 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 were a, well, they still are, but it, it, it's a collection of ska punk musicians. Oh yeah, and like the same. It was like think think like Streetlight Manifesto, but with more distortion and less harmony. Oh fun, yeah. So yeah. what about uh, what about Three Eleven? Uh, ska band? No ska band. That's it's ska. I Goldfinger. Think. Gold? Ska band. I actually even I don't know anything Goldfinger. Know. You don't know who Goldfinger is? I, I feel like, I, uh, I feel like I know them, but I, maybe not. I'm th- I might be thinking of a different band, but aren't they metal? Maybe Gold, Goldfinger? Goldfinger. That's not no. Uh, dude, no. Leftover the crack. We were talking about leftover, leftover crack. crack. What are your opinions on leftover? I'm not familiar with them. I got a note from the live audience though. Is Sublime a ska band? No. No. That's what I said. <laughs> Sorry. The genre they, is ska, but I, I, I don't put them no, in the No, they're, like they're like a like like it's like, guitar. It's like Real Big Fish is like I, the quintessential ska band to me. They're because like California like, Beach Guitar is is what... Uh, there you go. What's the, so sublime is, is, is California Beach Guitar. Yeah. <laughs> like Real real Big Fish, because like the, the tenants of ska are, well, you need a, be, a brass section. And then change their lead And then you need to be like lightweight and that. fun, you know? Like that's what sky music is a joke, basically. I I myself a beer. Yeah, yeah exactly. See, I, I mean, I like that song. I like that song a lot. I like Real Big Fish. I mean, you know, they did uh did they do uh Take on Me? 
They did do the cover yeah, of Take they, On they, Me. Yeah, yeah, there you go. I like that. Beer I, like, is a good I one. like Real Big Fish, but I like Streetlight Manifesto more because it's less jokey and more just actually fun. Mm. The mighty, like, the mighty, music the itself mighty, is mighty, uh, the mighty, mighty boss tones. Yeah, yes. yeah. that's a as much band. as the Real Big Fish is super fun. Like Streetlight Manifesto is like really just more quality, I guess. Of like they music, do musicianship. a great show. Yeah, it's just it's really fun. Yeah, it's just like they're, di- they're different kinds have. of fun. Have you guys ever seen that movie, Basketball? Yes. Yeah. Do you <laughs> remember that their, their fucking stadium performers was real big fish? I do not remember that. Because <laughs> they, the, they, Mil- they, they were the Milwaukee beers. So, <laughs> so it was like when, they, when, it turned, when they turned them into pros, like when it was going down their like big stadium, their fucking band was real big fish and they were, they were playing beer. I think they're, see, they're that, was, that was when I first heard about them and I thought that was funny. Yeah, they're fun. They're just fun. They are fun. Yeah. Do you remember that they were playing at Tampax Stadium? <laughs> <laughs> I want to play at Tampax Stadium. <laughs> Ew. That's a that's a that's a risky move, but all right, all right, all right, all right. Catching I'm... the wings there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. Anywho, let's switch to movies. On. We're going to movies because I got a list. I think Vito wanted to kick my this one My best movie off. of 2018 is Black Panther. Yeah, shut seconded. Up. Done over. Uh, shut the fuck up. That's your Done. best movie. That's the best movie of your 2018. <laughs> to be fair, I've only seen two new movies this year: Black Panther and uh, Avengers. So yeah, Black Same. Panther's my favorite movie of the year. <laughs> you guys I actually haven't seen any. You guys need to expand your guys' 2018 palette. Because there is much more better than Black Panther. And Tell me about it, Christian. I want to hear about it. Have you guys heard or seen a movie called <clears throat> Hereditary? No. Nope. I've heard of it. I haven't seen it. The movie is fucking spooky. And the thing I, I like about that movie was it was a really good kind of classic feel to a horror movie. Where they oh, I don't like horror. They didn't rely on cheap jump scares. It was just kind of like if you guys ever if you guys caught the movie The Witch. Did I did. I have that? seen The Witch. We it talked was, about that. It's kind of like the same style. I think the same studio made Hereditary. Mm. That movie on its own, kind I'm of. Just curious. <laughs> I'm I'm you're looking. You're it. cheating, dude. You're looking. That, <laughs> that movie in its in its own was a, a really creative style of horror movie. And, I mean, it, it really definitely made me feel uncomfortable. And the, the ending's got a pretty interesting take to it. Give it a watch if you guys haven't checked it out. And if you guys like The Witch, I say check this movie out. Is it streaming anywhere? Because I don't watch things. I feel like that's streaming. the ultimate question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You know what is streaming? My number one movie of 2018 is streaming right now. What? It is a Netflix original. And oh. I believe I told you guys about this. Wait, wait, wait. wait. You know what's streaming right now? Beefy Boys podcast. <laughs> <laughs> We're not streaming. We're your not favorite, live. Your favorite show. Well, yeah, but now there's Netflix. Uh, Touche. <laughs> streaming right now on Netflix. It's an original. It is. The Night Comes for Us. All right. I don't think you told us about this one. I mean, I, I mentioned it that it was that I already found my number one. Oh, movie. you did mention that. Yes. And, um, <laughs> gave it, you know. So, look, I mean, back a little backstory to this movie. So the guys that are in this movie were in a movie uh, called The Raid Redemption. Oh, and whoa. The Raid Part Red, 2. Red Raid Redemption? I remember, I remember reading We're getting the video games soon. Yeah, so, so you are, okay, so Colin, you saw the, the Raid Redemption. Or did you see Raid, the, the first one or the second one? Uh, I, all I remember in is... the apartment? Raid Redemption, clearing yeah. out, it, it was yep, like gory, out, yeah. it was... Exactly. So brutal this dude, mar- oh, martial yeah. arts. Yeah. Indonesian Indonesian uh, martial artist, Indonesian director. Uh, this you know the, in the Raid Redemption, he gets pinned up in a in a fucking apartment building. If you guys have seen the movie Dread, do you know the the remake of Dread? I really enjoyed that. I did too. Loved it. Yeah. Loved it. One of my 2013's favorite movies, and one of my all time favorite movies of all time. Anywho. It's just like that. And I think Dread kind of took from that a little bit and took their own colorful, creative way towards it because this movie was just kind of gray and dim. It was just gory, gray, shitty, and dingy. And so then they made the second one, which was just nonstop violence. And the, the, the choreography and the stunt work and the fighting with these guys is just out of control. So then all of a sudden I find out. I'm scrolling through Netflix one night. 
you know. Keep scrolling, scrolling, just, scrolling. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just looking for something to watch. And all of a sudden, I come across that movie, The Night Comes for Us. And I see that it's a Netflix original. So I'm like, oh, what the fuck is that? So I, I hold on to it to like kind of see the preview, and I see who's in it. And I'm like, whoa, I'm like, how, did I, how did I miss this? So I look it up on the Rotten Tomatoes, and then I read the reviews, and I'm like, all right, we're going to check this out. It was one of the most over-the-top, violent movies, by far probably the goriest movie I've ever watched. And, and just as far as action and stunt work and creativity in the martial art fighting aspect of it, it was just one of the most entertaining movies of the year. It was the most entertaining movie of the year for me. What's up, Vito? On the note of fighting movies, have you seen Ong Bak? And then the second yes, note... I love Ong Bak. It's fucking amazing. And then on the second note, on violent movies, have you seen Snatch? Yes. Okay, cool. This movie, uh, <laughs> this movie like, ups the gore 100% oh, on yeah. any movie. Sirens are on our end. You're not getting pulled over. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes, I mean, I, oh, okay, so a lot of people here in the, in the States, they don't tend to like a... Over the top, uh, over the top gory movie or violent movie per se because of the violence in America or whatever. But the world is a violent place. Get over it, folks. Enjoy your movies and entertainment. Uh, speaking of a movie that people didn't like because of how violent it was, Death Wish with Bruce Willis. I don't think I saw that. Eli Roth was the direct director on it, and if you know Eli Roth is directing that movie, and you, you know, know you don't sucks. like violence, don't go see the movie because guess what. It's going to be gory, it's going to be violent, it's going to be fun. I remember we saw that, so we go, we see it at the Cinnabar, and so, it's just, you know, it's it's an adult theater, it's 21 over, the theater's kind of packed when we show up. By the time the movie was over, there was about five of us left. And about everybody got up and left, and it was, you know... Wow, that yeah. shows how good it was. Well... It's not because of how good or bad situation it was. I'm just kidding. It was more of like a people just didn't want to see gun violence because they're fucking sad and whatever. And, and I mean, I get it. A school shooting happened like two weeks before this movie dropped. So oh, that's geez. kind of unfortunate. They were going to release it um, in October, but the Las Vegas shooting happened. So they moved it back. There was a whole Bojack episode, sudden, basically, with this exact plot. <laughs> Thoughts and prayers. Thoughts and prayers. Thoughts and prayers. <laughs> Anywho. Well, I have to interrupt you. I know that Cinnabar is supposed to be a poor brantou of cinema and bar, but it just makes me think of, like, a churro or, like, a long cinnamon. <laughs> 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 Anyways, a carry on. Cinnamon bar. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm just going to brush over these next ones a little bit. Ready Player One was another movie that I, I haven't really seen enjoyed. that. I, listened, I haven't I seen read that the book. It's a good movie. It's a big, you know, it plays back to the tropes of what... What I mean, it's a Spielberg film, on. so... I, I mean, I don't care about Sp Spielberg, but the good thing about Spielberg. it is the movie definitely shows a lot of the things that we looked up to yeah. and grew up on as, as, as fucking nerds and geeks and beefy boys, you know, that's like what we... <laughs> Can I say on. a word about the beefy boys for a second? What's up? Yeah. Like, when I hear the name of your podcast, it makes me think of, like, a club on Capitol Hill that's for daddies <laughs> that are explicitly fathers. You're like my sister who thinks that we say butt club instead of butt that's our, club. That's our, that's our clientele. We should have gone with Giggle Champs. <laughs> we were almost the Giggle Champs, Colin. <laughs> giggle champs. I like this name better. <laughs> another another horror movie uh, that was really good is A Quiet Place. If, you know, if you like Alien That was this year, movies, too? I haven't seen that one yet. Like yeah, so movies, bad. Gotta check it out because that movie is fucking awesome. Jim from The Office. Yeah. One hell of a job. John Krasinski. Uh, the movie Overlord. I remember talking about this on a podcast a few weeks Overlord. ago. Overlord. Overlord was so fucking badass. It's a World War II Nazi zombie type tale. You did where mention it's not this as extreme as it, It's not as extreme as people would think as far as like, oh, it's just a bunch of fucking Nazi zombies running about. It's not that. It's more of like a World War II with a spookier side to it that's kind of like a side mission of world war ii cool movie to watch if you guys are it's probably going to stream when it comes out definitely check Hopefully it out a lot of call of duty war. world of war you'll be right at home yes or uh yes castle wolfenstein with yes the zombie wolfenstein is more of like it's, well, it feels more like yeah. I, I, I feel like when it comes to nazi zombies i feel like that is one Excuse of the things me. that call of duty pioneered 
in its own yes. way. Call yeah. of Duty. Yes. Yeah. I feel like the movie Dead Snow, that Norwegian zombie Nazi I did not like movie. that movie, but You didn't like it? You didn't it, like it? It, it? it it didn't feel like so bad it's good is just so bad it's bad. <laughs> it's, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> is that is that your whole list? Because I want to drop boy, when homeboy punches or when when guy's standing Jesus. by the window and the zombie punches through the window and rips his face. Oh, in half, I need more beer. I think that is funny. We have uh, wine. I'm almost done with my list. Okay. I got two. Let me more know because I want to drop Tim's list in here at some point. Because I got uh, Tim. I got the Avengers. The Avengers is on this list. I think oh, that's Avengers on Tim's is, list too. Yeah, I think the Avengers is one of the better ones that I've watched. It's I pretty alright. Called... It's no Black Panther. Yeah. It's better than Black Panther. We had this discussion last everybody. week. You're wrong. Uh, <laughs> a movie called Upgrade. It's a. Oh, know, that's on Tim's list too. Another violent movie. But it's super cool. It's got a. Cool you should meet my brother-in-law. <laughs> And then uh, Bohemian Rhapsody. I don't know if anybody saw that movie, but Bohemian Rhapsody was awesome. I mean, the thing I liked about it was, yeah, it's a music, um, like, biography type yeah, deal. And That's people awesome. really want, people really want, like, uh, 100% like honesty and truth and, like, 100% facts when it comes to these movies. But you gotta bullshit it. It's Hollywood they're going to spin it, take it for what it's worth. Queen is Queen, and Bohemian Rhapsody is fucking awesome. I think uh, uh, Remy Malik. Rami. Rami Malik was terrific. That um, girls. That, r- mm. oh, yeah. <laughs> that right there Mm-mm-mm. concludes my list. But the best movie of the year for me so far is The Night Comes for Us. If you like martial arts movies, I'll Dolphin check it out. Um, yeah, so I, I want to just shout out Tim's list here. Now, the first three are literally the last three on your list. So Bohemian, <laughs> Bohemian Rhapsody, Avengers, and Upgrade. Oh, shit. He also calls out uh, Fantastic Beasts, Crimes of Grindelwald, which I haven't seen yet. That's I haven't the, seen it yet. Either. The new Harry Potter film. I'm not into those. I like the first uh, one. Though. Teen the Titans Go Harry to Potter. the Movies. Any yeah. of you into Teen Titans Go? That's got to be animated. Nope. And then uh, Ralph Breaks the Internet, which is the sequel to Wreck-It Ralph, <laughs> which I haven't seen. It's Pixar. It's going to be good. I haven't seen it either. It's gonna be good. Big it's gonna be good. Star. I do have to say, I really liked the first like adult Harry Potter one, which the the Fantastic Beasts. Yeah, or? that one was really good. I, yeah, I I'm interested to see where they go. Just I hadn't seen the second one. I want to see here the backstory of uh, Dumbledore and Grindelwald. But yeah, that'd be fun. A movie that I've right heard right. a lot about this year is uh, uh, Spider Man. Into the Spider Verse, Spider- yeah. Oh yeah, Spider Man. I, I, I have heard a lot about it, and I've heard. I just, I really like John Mulaney, and he plays Peter Parker, Spider Ham in that movie. So. <laughs> <laughs> that character is exactly what you think it would be. It's, you know, Spider Man. A, a pig, pig who's a spider. <laughs> yeah. Spider Pig. Spider Pig. Yep. Spider Pig. <laughs> yeah. Does whatever a Spider Pig does. I'll have to check Thanks, it out. Thanks, the Simpsons my, movie. My <laughs> and with it, teen siblings just introduced me to Spider Man Homecoming that I totally. Missed. Oh, I haven't seen that one. It's yet. Oh, so Homecoming good. Is good. I like. Yeah. I like yeah. that Spider Man. Really, good. it's good. Here's a here's a honorable mention to my list that didn't make the list, but it's an honorable mention is. Uh, Ant Man and the Wasp. I haven't seen, I haven't seen it yet either. Fucking bad. Ant Man. I did like Ant Man. Gotta go for Ant Man, dude. Ant Man is the shit. Dude. Evangeline Lilly is a cutie, but I haven't seen that movie. Ant Man's the All shit, right. and he's more important than anybody thinks. If you've seen the newer Avenger movies, he is more. Or yeah, we went over this whatever. last year, I week, am man. Marvel illiterate. Don't bother. Well, you only have like forty movies to catch up on. But that's right. So <laughs> forty movies from now. Did you see can... Solo? By the way, no. Colin and I's annual I tradition. Suck. Our I annual it. tradition used to be to go to the Star Wars movies at Christmas time. I like great. Solo. We missed this one. I haven't fun. seen it yet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's just it's weird for it to be Christmas time and me not to have a Star Wars movie to go see. I know it came out in like May, but I didn't see it. Though. That movie sucked. I didn't like it. I think it was. Boring. I'm hearing conflicting opinions. Though. It was good. The, it was good. It was boring. No I hated it. It was okay. It had it had some problems, but I enjoyed watching the movie while I was watching it, and so I felt like the the best part the about problems that I had was weren't when a problem. He found Chewbacca. I think the best part of the part of the movie was when they f- light speed flew a ship into another ship and blew it up. That was that fucking movie. sick. That was Last Jedi. Was it? Yes. Yes. Because <laughs> <laughs> I've seen that movie. <laughs> that was Lord Dern, a.k.a. I, I guess I forgot uh, what Solo uh, happened yeah, in Solo. Exactly. But I liked it. Uh, <laughs> oh, jeez. I was actually so. thinking of the wrong movie. <laughs> 
Do we want to? Okay. Do we want to go to video games next or TV? Oh, Deadpool two, another honorable mention. That didn't come out this year, did it? Oh, it Deadpool did. Two. Did it? Oh, then Deadpool two is probably my favorite. Deadpool two. <laughs> that wasn't I can't this believe, year. Wait a minute. Deadpool two definitely <sighs> makes my list. I didn't. See, I saw a lot of old movies this year, but so, I did not see any new ones. I can't talk. I received a note from the studio audience. I have to call it Babe Two Pig in the City. <laughs> <laughs> is there a new Babe movie? No, this is, is from like 1997. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's just a shout out, man. Oh, shout out, Babe in right. the Big City, pig movie. Let's go to TV and then we can close on video games. Um, TV. I'm not. See, I'm not too caught up on TV. Basically, all Netflix originals. All, all of them. Well, there's all a lot. the recent ones. I've watched like three different British ones baking that really show. Good. That too. You're into that. Oh fuck dogs! Yeah. I got. Some, oh, I watched dogs. That was fun. Dogs. Yeah. I want to call it a couple. So, uh, the new Sabrina. Did you guys watch that at all? No. Well, okay, it's fun. It's and, fun and oh, dark. Cool. You were telling us and my dad like worked the, on the original one. The original, like the '90s sitcom. Yeah. Okay, yeah, this is very different than that. And the like, <laughs> the, like '90s witch hunter thing. Okay. Whatever that was. Uh, I feel like that's the yin and the, the house yang. on Halloween. <laughs> I was going to say, I mentioned this one during the during the Halloween spooktacular about the Haunting of Hill House. That was Haunting a classic Haunting of Hill one. House was an awesome show. Did either of you watch Stephen King's Castle Rock on Hulu? I did. I did. I liked Castle That was Castle another fun Rock. one. Um, I think uh, What's-His-Face, who plays uh, Stephen King's shit, um, the Pennywise. What's his name? Bill Skarsgård. Oh, is he in yes. this? I like that guy. I like Sissy Spacek. She's the mom in the show. Who has dementia? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, um, I, I enjoyed that show. I think uh, Skarsgård did a good job of being a wide-eyed creep. I think the way, the more he opened his eyes, the spookier it was. But the town itself was just kind of like a really grim, grim. Yeah. It was very much a love letter to Stephen King, you know? Yeah. Like, they're at Shawshank State Prison and everything. Um, Colin, the these two's biggest like pop culture hole is that they've never watched Bojack. Did you see season five yet though? I did. Okay. So the free churro episode is one of my favorite episodes of television ever. That's the one that takes place at his mom's funeral the whole time. Uh, I had to call that one out. Yeah. It's gut wrenchingly sad and you don't see it coming. Yeah. I uh, think Will Arnett should win an Emmy for this episode. It's really, really good. Will Arnett has done exceptional in that entire performance, yeah. but that was definitely a strong point for him. Oh, yeah. I just can't imagine, yeah, Ara's making a motion, pantomiming a tear. I don't know how a cartoon horse man could make you cry, but this episode does it. Well, one thing I appreciate perfect. about that season of television is that it makes you stop rooting for the characters you were rooting for. Yeah. And yeah. one of the big points is it's very nihilistic and nobody's perfect. Mm-hmm. And it hits that note very hard. Yeah, but there's, like, real-life consequences, you know? Like, not everything right, just right, ends right, right, perfectly right. at the end of every episode. And if I can get personal for a second, that episode's about his mom dying. My dad passed away this year, so it really hit me in my feels. It was brutal. So, yeah, that's um, brutal. Sucks. That sucks. Yeah. But also, uh, on the Netflix originals, I remembered a name. Uh, Hilda is a really good Netflix series. Hilda? Cool. Yep. I it's, like, a little, it. like, sort of, uh, cozy little cartoon thing you'd watch on like a Sunday wrapped in blankets through with tea or something. It was really fun. Listen to that description. That's I was fucking that's how I'm you into that's it, how yeah. you sell somebody on a show. <laughs> yeah. right. um, I'm into tea and biscuits. One and, more uh, I wanna call it. Oh, and there's the one that had like the Simpsons art style. Oh, the Disenchanted. Like, oh, I didn't yeah. care for that one. I really it, liked it was that more one. like the Futurama art style. Yeah, but, Futurama. Yeah. Whatever. It was like Simpsons meets Futurama's art style with like really funny I also like want to mention shit. Homecoming on Amazon Prime. This is a Julia Roberts starring in the first TV role or first starring role in like 15 years. It was based on a podcast. It's about like this shady government initiative that's on the See surface that? helping military veterans adjust to everyday life. But obviously there's more going on. See it's th- super suspenseful and totally awesome. See, that should be our goal now is that there's been a movie made from a podcast is we need to make a movie based off our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> well, this was like a narrative, like radio drama style podcast. Can, like it uh, wasn't just like three people sitting around talking shit about the Limp Bizkit or whatever. Here's a, here's a, here's <laughs> love, a, our love of goats and our gotta, hate of Limp Bizkit are like the recurring a movie. On this show. <laughs> I make, don't hate Limp Bizkit. Yeah, we I I gotta <laughs> make a movie and we gotta make the cover, the art cover of the movie be a goat. <laughs> oh. Oh, uh, Julie Roberts also produced the show apparently. Oh. 
got my I got my researcher over here handing me notes. <laughs> um, here's a HBO um, exclusive that HBO. I really enjoyed was Hard Knocks with <laughs> the Cleveland Browns. That was a good season. It was a very good season. It was a cool way to see like uh, a person like a, a personality as good as Baker Mayfield. You know, I, I mean, in college, that guy was a fucking. Dude, he was awesome in college. He planted the flag. It was know. fun watching him be Baker Mayfield in college, right? Now, Vito, you don't Grabbing have to be... Grabbing his balls on the sideline and shit. Now, obviously, Hard Knocks is like training camp with ex-NFL team. Right. But you don't have to be an NFL fan to enjoy it, because it's really not about football. It's more like just a reality show. It is. It's just a reality show yeah. that has football in it. Yes. The football I may or may have not watched sports things before that were comedies. And you know, yeah. the, thing like about, the, water the thing about Hard Knocks <laughs> Like was the Air Buds. This the season, Air like... <laughs> <laughs> see, the season, this season with the with the Browns, it kind of kind of hurt a little more around the around the cut season. I feel like the cut season kind of kind of hurt a little well i think ever since the nfl changed their policy where you know you can keep your 100 man roster until the last week they didn't know who to follow so like every story they tried to make you care about all those people got cut this year so it's just like nobody survived who's that fucking long-haired dude with could you was it Devin? Devin could you yes the tight end yeah that story was really good and then they fucking cut him i was like oh my god you know it, it was it's just crazy because the cutting season like the cut day on this season definitely yeah it 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 was it was more of like the oh man that fucking sucks you know as when it came to like the watching I just the love this season because I like, could get yeah. give a shit you know yeah. you it, could tell that Todd Haley wanted to tell uh, Hugh Jackson he's a fucking moron but he like saw the HBO camera so he's like trying to temper himself <laughs> and then they both get they fired because they fired. can't agree on anything. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, yeah, that was that was, that was a, a good season. That, that was, was a good, a good season. season. Um, speaking of Netflix originals, I mean, um, I know this isn't 2018, but can we talk about Black Mirror for a second? Yes. Oh, yeah. we can always talk. I about love Black, Black Mirror. Black Mirror was that the one that had like the? Oh, never mind. Never mind. It's an anthology. It's an anthology. It's not yeah. the thing I was thinking about. But the so my two favorite episodes on that obviously the the big like Star Trek. USS Callister. Oh, yes. That that so that good. episode was very good. Taking my pussy was a red fucking line that episode. So there was there was that one and then there was uh the uh Joe this one concerns you, pal. Well, I got to pee. Because oh god damn it. Um uh, That's okay. You can <laughs> tell me. Yeah, okay. So do you remember the episode uh Shut Up and Dance? Oh, tell me a little bit more about it. It was like the dude gets home he beats off, but then all of a sudden he gets oh, like that. Oh, and it turns out he's a fucking pedophile. Yes. Yeah. Holy shit, dude! That episode threw me through the ringer. And like, I, I mean, as far as Netflix exclusives go, I just can't believe that they like reached to the depths of like making you feel shitty watching something because you support those idiots. You know, like you're you're supporting right. the guy, you're supporting him, and then the guy he's running around with. And you're just kind of like, not really supporting them, but you're like, kind of like, I hope you get out of this situation and figure this shit out. And then the end of the episode shows up. They're playing the radio. He's talking about Shut Up, You Can Do. Yeah, I heard yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah they're yeah. playing the Radiohead song. And it, fuck, that is like, that is the best episode. It makes you life. rethink that whole beginning scene when he gives the little girl the lollipop. I know, the holy shit, dude. It's crazy. The Radiohead song, the fucking, his mom calling him. And talking, like, yelling at him on the phone, it just, like, threw me through the ringer. I just couldn't believe that episode dropped. I really liked uh, Black Museum, which was the final episode of season yeah. four. I don't think I've seen that Monkey one. needs a hug. Christmas Monkey episodes. loves you. And the Christmas episode was, was one of my favorites. Uh, too. I think with John Hamm. With John Hamm, yeah. He's so... I also... Uh, no, I think I still think my favorite episode is uh, season one, I think it was. The Entire History of You. Well, you have the eyeball implant that records everything you've seen. Oh, for your yeah, whole that life. was a good one. That was probably my favorite. That was a really good one. Yeah, Black Mirror is a terrific show. It mm. is. It's a really cool show. It's, I like it's the like, one with those zombie creatures, but they're all just like homeless people or whatever. They're just killing Oh, the, the bugs? I didn't like that I'm one. I'm pretty sure that yeah. that's like what Seattle's Yeah, yeah I feel like that was one of the weaker. Into. Yeah, that one and the B one. Okay, so as far as Which Netflix goes. The B one? 
the bees that are killing people because the guy like hacks the robot bees and like they crawl into people's oh, I ears. I saw that one. I think one of he the like puts ones. on like social media like who do you hate the most and he murders that person with killer bees like killer robot bees. You don't remember this? No, <laughs> I don't think it was I do. not. A great it was episode. not great. Yeah, one it was of the long ones too. For me, was the one that. All, all the people had their ratings. Oh, I like that one. That yeah, one was that with Bryce Dallas Howard. Was beautiful. That one was oh, you're the crazy. Ones. I, oh, I that was the that one's like the, the closest to real life. Yeah, <laughs> that one is the oh, closest no, to real no, life. Right. But I mean, uh, that one just to me, just I don't know. That, that one, one in the Waldo one, where the cel- TV celebrity becomes president. Oh yeah, that's like the first episode. No, 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 no. That's the fucking the pig is the first episode. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> How did you forget that, man? Come on. Fuck. Thrown for a tizzy. Yes. Shut up and dance. Fuck. That's like. That's a good one. That's that's good. my it favorite is. one. I I feel like one of the things I appreciate about Black Mirror and shows like The Twilight Zone is that sometimes they're just not afraid to let the world burn. Exactly. I really don't like when Black Mirror tries to have a happy ending, like San Jun- like, Junipero. So good. Was that the way? Was that the one where they were kind of like they're dating? Yeah, the, the lesbians. Sorry, that episode sucks. People love that episode. That one, and then uh, Hang the DJ as well. That was supposed to be the dating app, where you're like, you remember this? This was like season four. It's a dating app but where they like tell you how long the relationships go. exactly. Yeah. I thought that was when they were just talking no, about. No, San Junipero like, is the one. one where you're like you're dead, but you're like hanging out in the '80s, or you pick like what decade you want to hang out in. No, 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 I'm not and talking it's like, about that one. I'm talking about the fucking the hang the DJ. App. Yeah, yes, I hate that, both of those episode episodes. Sucks. I just don't like the happy endings. <laughs> I want no, everything right. to be bleak. <laughs> right. You want. I mean, when you're watching of... a show like that, you kind of expect it. Would you classify it as grimdark? It's grim. I mean, it's it's the Twilight Zone basically. Yeah, yeah, it's. I, so you I want the bleak end? It's bit. dingy. It's fucking. It's like dingy. a shade of grimdark. Because there was a lot of the episodes that did like uh, almost all of them had not happy endings. So I mean, it's right. it, it's grim. Hang the DJ. Hang. Uh, they play that uh song. How about you guys' video games? Oh my god, I have thirteen on I my list. If somebody list else wants to go first. I mean, I'll give you guys my video <laughs> games really quick, just because my my list isn't long. I didn't spend a lot of time in I 2018. I just now made a, three, a, list, a list of three. A list of three. A list oh. of three. So, I mean, I didn't spend very long on on video games this year as far as, like, going out and buying independent games or anything like that. But <clears throat> one of my favorite games of the year is Far Cry 5. Word. That's on my list. It was also on Tim's list. That one was fun. Far Cry I 5 feel was like so much it's fun. It's starting to get formulaic. We're like, okay, it's a Far Cry game. I know where it's going. But it was fun that it was in the United States. Also, I feel like they wanted to get political, but they got scared at the last second. So it's like almost an anti-Trump game, but not quite. I mean, I, I figure it was more of kind of like Can we a- spoil the ending? Like it's like not, they spoiled it at the fucking at the announcement for the new one anyway. Yes, I mean if you haven't beaten Far Cry Five and you're playing it now, uh, you're fucking late to. The All right, podcast. well we're gonna spoil it. This is your this is your chance to turn the podcast off for like thirty seconds. Anyways, yes, at the end when it turns out the crazy doomsday cult guy Joseph Seed was fucking right and the nuclear bombs destroyed Montana, that was a fucking trip. <laughs> That's crazy. And then like no matter if you get the good ending or bad ending, you're just trapped in that bunker with him. It's like, what the fuck? Even when you get... Well, you, there's also the ending where you kill all your friends, too. Yeah, that's you which get, is you worse. You get in the car and you drive away, and then you hear the trigger song and you kill your pals. Yeah. Uh, Far Cry 5 was a lot of fun. The online version, you know, like the online of Far Cry 5, the, the customization, and then the arcade, that was a lot of fun. I tried to get into it, couldn't get into the online It was a stuff. lot of fun. But yeah, that's uh, on my list. NHL 19 and Madden 19 are two of my favorite games of this year. I know. Like I said, I didn't mm. spend too much time on buying new video games, just because I've been. It's been a busy year for me. Yeah. So I mean, with those two games, there's just so much more to those games than I ever thought. Especially more so with NHL 19 than with Madden. I think Madden has a better progression system when it comes to, like, progressing your players or anybody that you create or trying to franchise. If you're trying to franchise a player, yeah. NHL is not the game that's going to be in that favor but Madden They're, you can pick somebody up off the off the free agency who's yeah. a 68 overall and all of a sudden you know Pump with that up. 96 speed that he's got he's going to become a 90 the trick is to just season. bump up his awareness because that just races everybody's overall so fast um, they there's like long shot 2.0 in this Madden right is it as good as the first one there's a long shot it's part 2 but yeah. I didn't play it yet I haven't oh. played it yet I've been busy 
I, I just haven't heard as much about how cool it was on the first one. It doesn't seem to be. I thought as, about picking it up because it's on like super sale right now. It's like big sale on the PlayStation Store. I don't know it's why like you would. Bucks. I mean, if you're if I mean if you're a fan of the if you're a fan of Madden, it's so and many you like games game, to play, man. It's a fun Perfect. game. Right. Plus, uh, oh shit, part of me. Uh, plus the <laughs> Madden Madden the Gathering aspect of it. Yeah, so. that's always a fun. One. All the, right, what else you got? Shit. Is that it? The one and only. Yes, dude. yes, Fucking of Red course. Red Dead Redemption Part 2. I think we can, like, I know we're not doing, like, straight up awards, but I think RDR2 is our game of the year. Just because it's the one consistent between all of us that we all that played and about. loved. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm, I mean, I'm in that, I'm in the chapter with the... I have a switch. I'm in the chapter with the Moonshiners. Click, click. And yeah. it's, uh, you know, you're going back and forth. <laughs> There's a love story. That whole that whole chapter is a lot of fun to me. Yeah, I know. I like being the uh, yeah, deputy, mm. the sheriff's deputy or whatever they're called. Or the, where are they? Help me out. You become the, the deputy. Yeah, 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 yeah. The deputy. You get deputized by Sheriff Gray. Yes. It's like chapter three. You're still, yeah. you got to finish that shit, man. Dude, I We're record. The, the story's so good, it, especially when you get to the big twist. Which you haven't got to yet. No, obviously. and I can't wait. I cannot I'd wait. I'd say there's no real big twist. I feel like it takes too long for it to be a twist. You, we talked about this. We won't spoil this, but you hated the ending. I loved it. But I you hate, hated the ending I emotionally, like, not like, you thought it was, you didn't think it was like, well. yeah, exactly. It yeah. wasn't like poorly done. Yeah. You just didn't like it from a conceptual standpoint. Yeah. Like a <laughs> That's as far as we want to go down that path. Yeah, like a, like a, like a storytelling standpoint. Yeah. I felt like it's okay, it like Christian. I haven't gotten that far either. Yeah. Have, you haven't played it at all, <laughs> Switch owner. Yeah, that's true. Vito, what about you? You got anything to add? Any games you didn't mention? Uh, yeah, so I obviously read Dead Redemption 2, but also uh, Monster Hunter World. What? That's on my list too, bud. Really fucking I didn't know fun. you played that. What was your, uh, what would you play as? Uh, so I didn't play it for very long because I just didn't have time when I was playing it. Um, Did you finish the main campaign at least? Uh, no, I played for like a level or oh, something. Oh, jeez. But, <laughs> but like 16 hours or something. But <laughs> It's fun. It's like um, a whole game of raid bosses. <laughs> Yeah, and... Uh, but what was your class? What was your class? I played the uh, the bard or whatever. The bard? Yeah. Oh, the, the the hunting horn? Yeah. Oh, well, that's an advanced class. I thought you were going to say, like, sword and shield. I was going to give you a hard time. No, no, it was, it was really Long fun. Sword. I would smack <laughs> things really hard and then play music that makes me play harder. Yeah, you can... Yeah, you hit them in the head. <laughs> the, the hunting horn has really good stuff. It was damage, metal as too. fuck, so I, like, did it. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was a bow user because I wanted to solo the whole thing, and it's really easy to kite things when you're a bow user. And then uh, Call of Cthulhu was really fun. That's a game? Yeah. I yeah. don't even know what that is. There have yeah. been several along that line over the last... I think, I think there was a new well, one. like kind of game. I watched it. I didn't play it, but it was fun anyway. <laughs> okay, <laughs> All right. I, I've got one. As a Switch user, the one game that I've been trying to play and playing more, and I've got to proselytize is Dark Souls Remastered. Oh, I thought, oh! that's not where I thought you were going with no, this. No, no, oh, that's so. Oh. I've never played a Dark Souls. I've played Bloodborne. Me and I played Demon Souls. <laughs> okay, well, I never played any you of played that. The two hipster Dark Souls, <laughs> 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 the proper Dark Souls, but all Dark I just... Souls is fucking frustrating. I haven't man. played any of that it shit. It is okay. It's but, frustrating, but, but I'm also rewarding. terrible with the controller, so I'm not. Even yeah, yeah, well, you were not being good at Dark but Souls. But rewarding. It, but so what I would say about the Dark Souls remaster is it looks like the original. They fixed some bugs. They added some new content, you get all the DLC, and if you're playing on a console besides the Switch, you get it in HD. And Does that include a PC? Like, yeah, it's yeah, on PC. Yeah, it's on PC. Oh, then I get a keyboard and, and mouse and I win. it is a fantastic experience. Like, you nice. just look at the horizon, and there's all sorts of big towers, and mountains, and volcanoes, and chasms, and you're going to get to go to every single one of those locations. And I guarantee you, every place you go, there's going to be something for you to murder up there. Viciously, or most likely get murdered by. Yeah, from what yeah, I heard, yeah, you're gonna get murdered by, by about like twenty times. But then you're gonna get to very rewardingly just completely Skewer destroy it. something up there. <laughs> it, it, it's great. It's a fantastic cool. experience. You know, a game that I hope that they kind of remake and remaster is Dante's Inferno. Did you guys really? play that game? It's I like, like the lame action game. I like the I like the background of it. I like the idea of being in hell. Um, yeah, like it's that. a cool idea. But I, I love I love the environment more than I like the game. What's what's that one game that they like made a new one ish of recently? It was kind of anime that was fighting game. D, DMC. 
Devil May Cry? I think. The yeah, new yeah. one's coming out soon. It's not. That out one yet. was really good. Uh, it came out like two years ago, three years ago, something like oh, that. Oh, yeah. yeah. They're releasing another new one. Yeah, DMC 5. Right. Colin, you had a point. You raised your hand. Yeah, <laughs> like no, that was my, like, child. you know, weeaboo. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. confused. Yeah, uh, yeah, I watched the anime for it, and it was fun, but then I also play, played the game, and it was really fun. I want to get into my He's games He's worse than I am, so. <laughs> I have some crossover. I, I organize these generally by release date, because I'm that kind of nerd. Anyways... I want to call out Monster Hunter World. I played that game for hundreds of hours. Aro would give me such a hard time. But like I said, I was a bow user. I tried to collect every single armor set in both low rank and high rank, which takes a long fucking time. That was my game of January and February. <laughs> Far Cry 5 was pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. I want to call out Nino Kuni 2 Revenant Kingdom. That's a JRPG sequel. That was good. Yeah, it's fun. I haven't it's played the long. series yet, but it's I've fun. heard it's good. Uh, I got a couple of indie games here. Have you guys heard of Donut County? Nope. Nope. So the idea of this game is you control basically a hole in the ground, and every time you suck something in, you get a little bit bigger. So it's like a puzzle game where you have to like destroy an entire town, but the at first your hole's only big enough to like suck in cockroaches. That it's, sounds like fun. And then there's like this whole like story. Katamari. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of like Katamari, except you're just a hole in the ground. There's like this whole story. There's like these like raccoon people. It's it's pretty fun. It's cheap. It's on iPhone for like two bucks. Um, Celeste is another is a Switch indie game. This is like a hardcore platformer. You guys played this one at all? Nope. You'd think the Switch owner would. No. <laughs> no. Yeah. So it's like I'm it's just like kidding. <laughs> it's like Super Meat Boy, and that it's like a super difficult platformer, but it's also like an allegory for anxiety. So like the main character definitely has social anxiety and is trying to deal with it the whole time. So it's uh-huh. super fucking sad. Um, uh-huh. Into the Breach. Have you guys heard of this one? This uh-huh. is a turn-based strategy game for Switch and PC. You would is it Dissidia? Yeah. No, Dissidia is a fighting game. Oh, oops. You're thinking of this guy. Tactics. Yeah. Anyways, all your fucking this games is are on the Switch, man. I don't know any of these. Well, no, I'm getting to the good ones. This is a turn-based <laughs> strategy game for the Switch. Um, it's it's a roguelike mixed with XCOM, where you're like you pilot three mechs and you're fighting these giant bugs, but like everything can go wrong so fast because it saves every turn, so you can't like rewind it's at like all. Fire Emblem. It, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But oh, if yeah. Fire Emblem didn't give you the chance to restart, <laughs> it, and then your characters have permadeath, so you just have to restart the whole game. Which is not too long because it's only like four levels, but it's. Didn't you have to difficult. restart in, in Fire Emblem? You had to restart chapters. Oh, you didn't okay. have to restart from the beginning. Right. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Next, uh, the so God of War 2018. Did any of you play this? No, but here it's really good. It's really good. I call this one uh, "Bad Dad, Rad Lad" because you Kratos is taking his son on this adventure. And it's all about Norse mythology, just like the puzzle elements. And I never saw a glitch the entire time. This won the uh, Game of the Year from the Game I Awards over Red Dead. It's really fucking good. Is it in the? Is it in the? Like, is it taking place after the first? It's one? after the first. Yes, it's. He's much older, and he's like moved to like Scandinavia, so it's all like Norse mythology instead of mm. Greek mythology this time. So you have I really new yes. stuff to murder. I really yep. want to play it. The world serpents in it. You got Odin's fucking with you. Yeah. Tear or no, um Balder is like the big bad the whole time. Uh okay. Tear's then... definitely Tears lead Balder, isn't he? Is Thor a sub- Tears not even in the game. Tears is, is the Thor god of war. Or a sub boss in this Thor is around, yeah. He's also he's a dick. <laughs> but because Odin keeps fucking with you, because he's mad, because you're like not a Norse god. He's like, you're not you shouldn't be here. You know, because you're a Greek god. Anyways. Uh, Spider-Man, PS4. That one was fucking awesome. It really made you feel like Spider-Man. Really good, yeah. The combat is really, like, all about dodging, and, like, your Spidey sense just, like, activates, so you like, gotta do these crazy dodge moves. It's really, really, really good. And then swinging around New York City is just so much fun. It's a breeze. Um, Valkyria Chronicles 4, that one is super nerdy in Japanese. I have a copy of it here. The spoilers, I'm getting it from my Secret Santa and Aris family. It's about as Japanese as it gets. It's a strategy RPG, much like Fire Emblem, except like if when you can took over your units, instead of just like telling your sword fighter to go fight that guy, you took over like in a third person shooter environment. So you had to actually physically aim your gun each time. Hmm. It's fun. It took forever to beat. Um, <clears throat> the Messenger, this is another indie Switch game. This is a. Love Letter to Ninja Gaiden, like the original, except 
like halfway through it switches from an 8 bit game to a 16 bit game, and like the 16 bit part is supposed to be in the future. It's also like full of inside jokes and pretty funny. That was a really good one. Um, I only got a couple more here. Assassin's Creed Odyssey. I was involved in Google's Project Stream, so I could play Shut this up. on my uh, MacBook while streaming it from the cloud. It's the best Assassin's Creed game ever. I mean, it's straight up an RPG at this point, and every side quest is super duper fun. I did a side quest where it was this guy locked himself in a cage because he had been prophesized to kill his parents. So he's like, you have to go find these items for me. So you go get this like shield from a blacksmith, and I played as the lady, so I ended up fucking this blacksmith. And then it was like, go get this bow and arrow from this lady bandit, so I killed the lady bandit. And then you bring these items back to the guy, and you told him what happens. And his parents turned out had adopted him. So like the blacksmith was his dad, and the bandit you killed was his mother. So he's like, so, and then his dad, his adopted dad's like, yeah, so you fucked his dad and killed his mom. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> stuff like that. It's a fun, a fun little game. And that then. That was, uh, the, the Odyssey was, that's the, the newer one, right? That's, that's not, yes. That's you, not the one in Egypt. Origins is in Origins. Egypt. Odyssey is in ancient Greece. So and they yes, we're talking that about it on awesome. NPR today. That's on what they were talking about Apple. Assassin's Creed. Yes. Wow. They were, they they were, were talking about Spider Man Into the Spider Verse on NPR today they too. They were. <laughs> they had a Greek classicist play Assassin's Creed. What did he think? He thought that the uh, the Oracle. Uh, Oh, I thought you played it from the beginning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> looked pretty spot on. Because you run into like Euripides and Socrates and uh, right, so Pericles. He, you know, it's an Assassin's Creed game. Thinking about getting that game on clearance. Like, it's pretty good. It's on hell of sale right now. Yeah. You get all the holiday sales. Or one more, and I can't believe Colin didn't call this one out. Smash Ultimate, man. It was great, but I didn't want to like spoil it because it's it's so good. What? <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> you can't spoil like, a mean, fighting it, game. It, it, I, I'm just saying that it's going to be on everyone's list. Like, like you're just I, such I a hipster. Played, I grew up with that. I grew up the N64. Yeah. Smash yeah. Brothers. That was what we always played in elementary school when you went over to your friend's house. Yeah. It was highly competitive. And fuck Talking whoever shit. played Star Fox yeah. on that. That was level. me. That was me. <laughs> and I couldn't make that stupid jump to get on the end of that 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 shit. The Hyrule. Ca- oh, the the. <laughs> I I didn't know the how great to do Fox it. level and or whatever. Tell me, and I got really frustrated. Oh, and man. I didn't own an N sixty four by the way. I didn't have a game console until the GameCube, so I just got my ass handed to me. But I still enjoyed that game. I thought it was so much fun. Did you bring your Switch, by the way? I did. Well, mine's in my bedroom. We should play later. Anyways. Absolutely. <laughs> um, yeah. So those are my games of the year. But Smash Ultimate's great. The Spirits mode, man. So I'm on this quest, Colin. I want to level up all of my spirits to level 99. And I want to get them, teach them all every one of the dojo trainings. <laughs> <laughs> it's the most tedious thing I've ever done. And it's really starting to drive me crazy. But I'm getting there. <laughs> it, you know, I... Yeah, I, I've just There's been about... starting to delve into multiplayer, and I feel like mm. the level of difficulty you see in the campaign and the level of difficulty that that effing Lucario player can unload on you in Lucario's online. Lucario's the one you have to watch out for? It's the young Link that, with his fire arrows that drives me nuts. It, also, me, Swordsman, is pretty <laughs> beefy. Not gonna lie. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah, the single-player mode actually kind of makes you worse. If you're playing World of Light mode, because you get all those skills where you can, like, charge your smash attacks forever, or, like, smash attacks heal you, so you're just, like, right. you're, you're, so you're overpowered. Invinci- it's, yeah, exactly. But going into online, it's a very intense arena. And these two fine gentlemen over here that I'm making eye contact with. Petting, <laughs> petting each other's <laughs> beards. Yeah. Sensual we, moment. We just have no <laughs> idea what's going on. I don't have a Switch. I don't have a Super Smash Bros. Click, click, you, no. you ne- but you played a Smash game. Of course. Yeah. Of course, of course. Right, so this is like that, just on steroids. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <Ugh>. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely right. Uh, we got one Facebook comment on top games from Tim Mahoney. Who the fuck else would it be from? Tim! Uh, <laughs> he Yo, mentions Tim. RDR2, Super Smash Bros., and Far Cry 5, and then he also mentions Kirby Star Allies, 
which is oh. a Kirby game for the Switch came out this year. It plays in 2D, but the hook on this one is you have basically a charm ability where you can charm Kirby enemies and then like other players can play as them. Hmm. So it can be like a four player multiplayer game where one person is playing like a Waddle D or whatever the fuck. <laughs> and, and one person is playing as Kirby and then you can like combine their powers. So you can give them like a sword with a fire attack Did or like. You- Cross the streams. You can cross the streams, yeah. I played the demo. It's pretty cool. I don't know if I'd put it on my top ten, but he has a f- seven-year-old son, so they play games together. What is oh, with dad simulator go. games this year? You're talking about Dream Daddy? Uh, <laughs> you know about that Dream was Daddy? several years ago. <laughs> that was man. last year. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Archer Dad? No, no, no. So this was a <laughs> gay dad Octodad. dating sim. Yeah, Dream Daddy. <laughs> like, yeah, it, it's exactly what it sounds like. All right. Uh, <laughs> we got any other thoughts on our best of episode? Or Oh, man. I think the best podcast of the year was Beefy Boys Podcast. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You're such a homer. We're, we're, <laughs> we're getting an award. Uh, best podcast of the year. Well, that we gave to ourselves. Oh, yeah, we're while you here, ourselves. Christian, here's your... Uh, Fantasy football trophy. <laughs> now I know it's a lady soccer <laughs> player, but don't worry about that. <laughs> we got one made. That's well, amazing. you know what? Buddy? No, I have. <laughs> it may be a trophy, but it ain't going to me. I it's wish gonna I go to Claude. Yeah. I wish I could hoist this bad boy up, but I got we gotta get like some electrical tape on there to say like fantasy football, because clearly it's a lady soccer player. But whatever. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. I think we need to do something for the loser. So if you're listening now and you're a fantasy football player, or you have a good idea for what we should make our loser in the league do as far as like a humiliation. Is it's it not obviously not gonna. No, no Claude's gonna win. gonna win. Oh, Claude will probably be. We had this discussion, but I have like the third best record and didn't make the playoffs because of some bullshit reason. Anyways, carry divisions. On. Yeah, he was in a he was in a shitty bullshit. division. <laughs> uh, or no, sorry, you were in a good division. Yeah, that was the problem. Yep, he was in too good of a division, and then the bottom division was just. Nothing but just shit players. Yeah. So then those <laughs> shit players made the playoffs and knocked me out. So anyway. <laughs> <They did. laughs> you lost to your dad. That's so embarrassing. I didn't lose to my dad, dude. I oh, lost, you lost to, to fucking Diego. 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 He's yeah. got some serious football experience on you anyway. Christian's dad is terrible at fantasy he football. Is <laughs> I'm calling you out Jack Sullivan. <laughs> He's terrible. Rodrigo's terrible. My brother was terrible. There was a lot of terrible teams this year. My girlfriend was terrible. Just, was <laughs> she got so salty when you said that to her. Yeah, right. she did. <laughs> she did. I feel bad, but it's the truth. If you're man. bad, you're bad. If you're bad, you're bad. I mean, I've been terrible three years in a fucking row. Finally, I'm ten and two and he one. He was he was kicking and ass. I'm this balling year. out. My team is just scoring 150 points a game. Come the playoff times, my team starts scoring 80 points a game. <laughs> and I fucking lose. Um, with that being said, I think 2018 is a wrap. I think I think it's crazy. Rap, rap, rap. Look for us in the new year, man. It, yeah, you. I mean, next time you'll be hearing us, it'll be a, it'll be a brand new year mm-hmm. for all of us. Mm-hmm. And uh, Colin, we appreciate you coming on here and and you know talking shit with us and discussing Limp Biscuit. You know the classics. It's Limp Biscuit. A pleasure. The classic. <laughs> the classics. <laughs> it, it, it's a pleasure games. to be part of this fine cultured program. Oh yes. <laughs> Very much so. It's like Joe's book on roids. Find it on Amazon.com. Just search for 101 Manatee Jokes. <laughs> it's probably the only one. Oh, it's the only, res- it's the the only, only one. one, yeah. Until 102 comes out. That's the that's sequel. going to be with me. Uh, <laughs> Joe, go ahead and wrap us up. Send us through our plugs. and uh, yeah, You can find us at BeefyBoys.com for all your... Mm-hmm. Beefy Boys updates. We're on Facebook at Facebook.com slash Beefy Boys. Don't be a scrub. Don't be a scrub. We're at Twitter at Beefy underscore boys. That's more of a read only situation because none of us want to tweet. Uh, Instagram at Beefy Boys Bud Club. You want to see all our great post episode selfies. Um, our merch store, cafepress.com slash Beefy Boys Merch One. Great last minute Christmas gifts. You want to get like a t shirt for your friend's dog? That's the spot to do it with the Beefy <laughs> Boys logo on it. I'm not making that up, if Colin. That's a ashtray, real thing we offer. <laughs> Keepsake <ashtray> box. <laughs> Uh, and, and we're, we're on you know, we're, iTunes we're, and we're, Spotify. We're new label too, so I mean, uh, we are updating our logo to be less blue. generic looking. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, yeah. So Buy that's, your dog's shirt. Merry Christmas. That's our Happy best New of Year. episode. Oh, that's us signing off. I'm Joe. I'm Colin. Vito. And I'm Christian. And we will see you all next year. <laughs> <laughs>